says her child was highlighted in a recent TV ad for Tim James. The ad meant to criticize the Magic City Acceptance Academy is causing concern over her family's safety. I obviously didn't like the attack on my children's school. I felt very uncomfortable with it. But I felt particularly uncomfortable with the fact that he had a picture of my child in his ad. The public charter school labels itself as an LGBTQ affirming learning environment. In his ad, James argues tax dollars should not be used to support the school. They're fl flying the American flag in the pride flag. This is a public school for heaven's sakes. And when, when you fly a flag that supports that, that's not education. That is a political agenda. After seeing the ad, which featured a drag show fundraiser, Fasking reached out asking the James campaign remove pictures of her child, which they did. However, in a Facebook post, James listed Fasking as the parent making the request, which is why she is speaking up. There was a no-win situation for our family. He put us in this position. And there, there was no way for us to, to just quietly step back. And I can't find a seconder usually when I propose this, but I don't care. I don't need a seconder. My own opinion is enough for me. And I claim the right to have it defended against any consensus, any majority, anywhere, any place, any time. And anyone who disagrees with this can pick a number, get online, and kiss my ass. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed are greater than the legal services provided by other lawyers. And in this state, that ain't too hard to prove, is it, Mr. Russian? No, it's, uh, it's sadly not. <laughs> uh, you found the Backstory Podcast. I'm Harry Steele. Backstory Podcast number 129. Mr. Rip is in Parts Unknown. And uh, so you have me and Mr. Rushing to keep you entertained tonight. How are you, Mr. Rushing? Now, if I was any better, there'd be two of me here. It's uh, It was uh, ridiculous today. I went to uh, Starbucks for the first time in forever, and um, I heard two guys talking. One was a mathematician, and the other one was a physicist. And the mathematician said something really interesting to me. He said, you know, applied physics is really just the same as applied mathematics. And then out of nowhere, this guy who's a philosopher says, well, you know, applied, physicism, or applied physics is – Basically, just applied philosophy. And you know what the mathematician said? BS. Hey, buddy, shut up and make my coffee, will you? There you go. I like that one. Not too bad. So uh, we'll get to it in a little while, but I did want to highlight one million deaths. Yes, sir. We finally hit the milestone. Finally. So let's talk sample ballot. Let's talk uh, Let's talk my shading here. So I... Um, the red is the person that I think is probably the most qualified for the job, but the blue is the person who I believe will win. I understand. Before you get too deep into this, let me, uh, I'm going to just kind of play MacGuffin for a minute. Harry, do you guys have what's called a draw in your primary system? No. Well, here in Texas, we actually have a draw. And in most states, you have a draw before an election. It's usually months before an election where the candidates all show up at the party office and they draw numbers out of a hat to see who will be how they'll be listed on the ballot. And y'all don't have that in Alabama. Are y'all just listed alphabetically? I have no idea. It appears that way. Okay. I was just curious because we have a draw in, in Texas and I attended, I've attended four draws for candidates. And the draw is very important in primaries. And I'm just, I was very surprised to learn just a few months ago that Alabama didn't have a draw. And it's one of the few states I've ever been involved in in the campaign process that doesn't. And I thought that was interesting. Looks like alphabetic order, man. So, um, yeah, Lou Burdett is, uh, is a businessman, um, has a very interesting life story. If you haven't heard it, you should go uh, find something on YouTube about him. Uh, Robin Litiker, uh, for Public Service Commission, place two. So one of the things you learn on the campaign trail is you get it, you know, you're stuck with these people somewhere like a park where not a whole lot of people show up. So you end up talking to the people at the table next to you and you find out who, real quick, like, who knows the nuts and bolts and who is totally clueless about the position they're running for. Right. I can tell you, uh, Ms. Litiker is a sharp cookie and I'm looking forward to having her on the public service commission. So, uh, we, we should all, uh, 
support her if we can. Of course, you know, Governor Ivy's going to win, and and we can uh, go through some of these slides real quick, Reigns. How super PACs rule Alabama Senate race. Mike Duran is supported by the California liberals, is not an Alabama resident, and favors disarming the public. This is the message packed into multiple mailers arriving to mailboxes sent by the Alabama Rhino Pack. Katie, Britt. I, it sounds it, it, Mike Durant sounds suspiciously like uh, Coach Tuberville. <laughs> uh, he's supported by all out of state right. funds. Doesn't even live in the Alabama, and he favors disarming everybody with his wit. And how he got elected, I think it's a fool's chance. So Durant's got just as much chance as anybody based on that logic. So, so according to the ads, Katie Britt's a lobbyist who supports a gasoline tax. Now that is true. She did support the gasoline tax when she was the head of the business council. The Club for Growth Action Pack claims that to be true in the TV and radio spots. I think that is true. And then U.S. Mo Brooks is a career politician, distrustful of former President Trump, according to Alabama Futures. So, you know, all these messages attacking each other, and it's not even coming from their campaigns. That's what right. that's what we're trying to say here, folks. Fourteen million dollars is in play in out of state money to buy this Senate seat. And if you don't think they're buying it, you don't know what's going on. You're absolutely right about that. Let me tell you about how it is in Texas. We are in the middle of a primary as well. Actually, today was the last day to vote. I voted the other day. Um, we're an open primary state where you don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat to vote in the primary. You can vote wherever you want. So it's actually the primaries are a bigger deal here than they are in Alabama, where the primary is basically the general election. So we have uh, Judge Lena Hidalgo, hands down the best looking uh, county judge in any state. She's absolutely gorgeous. And she's a fantastic judge. And her top opponent is a guy named Vidal Martinez. And he's a Republican, of course. And my parents are staunch Republicans. And I was at their house the other day and they asked me to check the mail. And I went out and got the mail. And the first card I got was, Support Vidal Martinez for paid for by uh, Vidal Martinez and conservative Texans for action. The next card in their mail was F Vidal Martinez because he's a rhino Republican. This paid for by the rhino pack right. of Texas, you know, and neither one of them were paid for by the committee to reelect. Neither one. They were both paid for by independent packs. And this is everywhere. This is Citizens but, United incarnate. Right. right. This is You're what we were all absolute, fearful of. At the eldritch horror that has been created by it. So the Forest Pack poll, we looked at this a couple weeks ago. Um, well, actually, it didn't come out until a few weeks ago. But, um, you know, you can see the headline there. Governor Ivy refuses to debate political cowardice or cunning strategy. I'm going to call that cunning strategy on well, her part. And so let's talk about more dark money is it hilarious to you that the writer for al.com can't discern where this 1.7 million dollars came how how this mysteriously appeared in her coffers well it's um it's not disappointing as much as it is yet another revelation and dark look into alabama politics in that Everyone in Alabama who thinks that they're in control of Alabama politics are dead wrong. The people who are in control of Alabama politics are not in Alabama right now. Hmm. True. And so he's still a long shot, but recent poll show Lou Burdett's focus on Alabama centric issues is resonating with some voters. And so, like I said, he's a, you know, if we were all sitting down and we were going to hire a guy to run our company, it probably wouldn't be an 81 year old woman, right? It would, pr- you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know how much gas she has left in the tank. And it's a, it's a well-known fact that her chief of staff has been running that office for years. Well, now, let me help you refine that statement a little bit, candidate. I believe that if we were running a company, we would want the absolute best person for the job. And if that was the case, I don't think I would want the particular incumbent who has flip-flopped on more issues than a Gulf Shores surf shop (laughs) and honestly has done less for the state of Alabama than Governor Kay Ivey. But just like we talked about about 80 podcasts ago, you don't want to run against a Meemaw. 
Right. And it's, that's where and that's how everybody feels about her. That's that's cunning on her campaign's part that she's not going to debate. Who wants to debate the nice, kind old lady? You well, know, she, nobody wants to see you verbally beat up an old woman on stage. And on top of that, uh, Made in Alabama, a new economic development website has been launched, uh, touting all of Governor Ivey's great accomplishments. <laughs> That's the, one of my favorite things dime, about economic development groups, Harry, and I think you could probably vouch for this. The good thing about being an economic developer is you can claim anything. If somebody opens up an ice cream shop while you're the economic development director, they could be from Vietnam and not even speak the language. And you can go and shake their hands and go, welcome to uh, Fort Stockton, Alabama. We're glad you're here. And you can thank the economic development uh, talents of Harry Still the Third for getting you this ice cream shop. And they're just going to go, okay, you know, and economic developers do that all the time. I see it nonstop in Montgomery County. I did it for five years in Gulf Shores. Yes, that's everything. what I'm saying. Just to the north of us, we have an economic development council that every couple of weeks will post, hey, congratulations to somebody opening an ice cream shop or somebody opening a niche. Uh, you, you know, you know. sometimes people call them, I'm, I've, I've made a lot of money and I want to shut my wife up, so I'm buying her a business model. You know, that's we get a lot of those. And then all of a sudden, a steel company is expanding their pipe yard by 500 acres. And this same economic development council wants to say, hey, this is what we're doing for you. We got this steel plant. That steel plant's based in Korea. <laughs> right. That steel plant owned the land all around it for 40 years. And they're just happened to be expanding. So the EDC says, good job, us. You're welcome, Montgomery County. EDC guys can say anything they want. Yeah. And, and that's what, exactly you know, what At is. some point, we need to do a, a podcast about the dark side of the Robert Trent Jones golf trail. That would be oh, I'm that, here that for would it. Get some folks. But, but here's the thing, man. Everybody's running against Biden. Go listen I to their you, stumps. I mean, I've been I there. It. I and, know it, and it's ridiculous because even though I'm a Democrat, that's low hanging fruit. It's real low hanging fruit. Real low hanging <laughs> fruit. Low hanging right fruit. So um, that's I feel like we're being robbed of, you know, an honest debate of the issues. So um, one more time, since Paul's not here, I'll speak for him. Paul says, "Don't vote for Jonathan or or Steve in a uh, Baldwin County Commission District Two. His candidate is Matt McKenzie, and of course, I think the best man for the job is Jonathan Armstrong." Um, I think Skip Gruber is going to win. I, I, I honestly have been around. Uh, I've met Chris Crawford one time. I don't know. Um, and then there's a statewide constitutional amendment um, for a general obligation uh, bond. Uh, That's an $85 million, 85 bond million the, uh, bucks. Alabama parks, right? right? Department of Conservation and Natural Resources and the Alabama Historical Commission will get that money. And decide where it goes. And, of course, Mr. Ziegler is in the running. Our state auditor, the self-proclaimed watchman, uh, now says that, the, of course, the Secretary of State, that's just the most important position in Alabama. So let's talk uh, some local stuff here for State Representative District 64. One more time, I, I one of these people that I met on the campaign trail that was pretty impressive, Angelo Fermo, has the little wine shop down here across the right. Angelo's at 64 and 181. And, um, he is, uh, he was, in the, he was, he was in the service, but let's put it that way for a long time. And then of course, Donna Givens, who I believe will probably win this election <clears throat> because her job for the last 20 years has been doing PR for our local uh, electric cooperative, you know, where she goes out and hands people checks and things like that and gives kids scholarships. So she's got a lot of goodwill in the community that was created by her job, right? Right. So then you've got uh, District 94 down here in Fairhope, Joe Faust and Jennifer Fiddler, uh, you know, pick a candidate. They're both, they're just hedging their, cat Catalyst is hedging their bets, I believe. Faust. Am, am I mistaken in saying that Jennifer Fiddler is the incumbent? No, Faust is. He's a hundred. He's one hundred eighty-five years old, and he ain't going anywhere. I mean, he really is in his eighties, I think. And then Jennifer is a. I want to say she worked for the city of Fairhope. One of those people the mayor had a bunch of trouble with, you know. And then uh, state. Now this is uh, the position vacated by Steve McMillan's death. State rep 
uh, District 95. And uh, Francis Hope Jones, I believe, is going to win. Um, I, and just saying, somebody that's put in the time and, and uh, invested in the community, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Jones' father was the mayor in Foley in the bad old days. <laughs> so um, hopefully none of that rub, rubbed off. But I know her and her husband well, and they're good folks, and I expect her to pull that out pretty handily. And then, of course, State Rep uh, District 96, I imagine Matt Simpson is going to win that pretty handily. Right. So then you have me and Mr. Marshall, <laughs> um, and then you have uh, State Senate uh, District 22, and that is, of course, Mr. Albritton's district. He has unlimited support of the Porch Creek Indians and right. everybody who wants to get some money because guess what? He's the chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. So let's talk about this Supreme Court race, Reigns. Let me give you a little insight. So you got Greg Cook, who is the incumbent. Um, he is a Birmingham blue suit, prototypical attorney, pro-business. And then you have Deborah Jones, who unimaginably got $1.5 million from the Trial Lawyers Association and all of her ads just have her. She's five foot tall, little redheaded lady standing there shooting this great big old gun like this one, right? <laughs> so, anyhow, I thought it was uh, comical, and uh, I expect Mr. Jones to win that pretty handy. Harry, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to do me a favor for uh, just for safety's sake. I'm gonna need you to put that in a safe. No, I'm not talking about the weapon. I'm talking about the bullets that are in the weapon because they may be more valuable than your home. True. I'd hate for the bullets to get stolen. So, so this this is the it's a double stack forty five with a fifteen plus one, pretty. Wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, okay, so let's let's stick on this. Uh, Secretary of State, I believe the best man for the job is Ed Packard, and I believe he will win that job. You really believe that Packard's going to win it? Mm hmm. I really do because he is. You don't think it's going to go to a runoff? Everywhere, well, it could be in a runoff, but I think ultimately he'll win, and I think he'll be in the runoff. Uh, he is, yeah. he has worked his butt off everywhere I've been. He's been there ten minutes before I got there, and and was the last. Well, one here's to leave. here's the thing though, Jim Ziegler hasn't, and I think that works to his advantage. So I really think that there's going to be a little bit more of no, no, no. Uh, Ziegler's been everywhere too. That's what I'm saying, but he hasn't said a whole lot, which works in his favor. Oh, I true. mean, we gave him great campaign advice. I. I, I remember asking him if he would take my pillow CEO Mike Lindell's endorsement if he got it, and by God, he got it and used it. So, yeah. I you know I ought to send him an invoice for that, but because he didn't know who Mike, he didn't know who the guy was until I asked him about it. Now he's one of his chief chief uh, endorsers in his campaign. So I'm here to tell you, I don't think you ought to count out Ziegler. I think I'm, I'm not counting him out. I'm and you miss a, and and everybody needs to know that I think our hundredth podcast, he was one of our guests, right? Right, that's when I so, asked him, and I and I like it. I like his wife. I like him. I just don't think he's. I don't think he's cut out for the job like Ed Packard is. He's been. He's done the job for twenty years, working in Fair the enough. Secretary of State's office. So then, for State Auditor, which is the position that Mister Ziegler is leaving, I believe Rusty Glover will win that pretty easily. Um, Public Service Commission Place One. I really don't care who you vote for. Just don't vote for Odin, the incumbent. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, State Republican Executive Committee Place 6, I believe uh, Mr. Sumrall will, will take that from Mr. Elliott and then uh, Mr. Roberts, and then on down, I, I don't really know those folks, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep my nose out of it. Well, can we, can we just hit real quick that when you're talking about who's going to win, you're really talking about the general election. Because while, yes, this is a primary ballot, let me tell you something that maybe you didn't know. The Democrats also have a ballot <laughs> in Alabama. Might as All well right? might as well talk about it, I guess, since we're not going to look at and it. And I'm going to tell you, there are four people running for the governor's nomination, the governor's race Democratic nomination. Harry, I found three people on that list that have raised even less money than you have. Wow. They must three really, they must the really nominees, be principled. Three of the potential nominees 
for the Democratic position against the Republican governor, three of them, according to campaign finance reports, have raised zero dollars for their political campaign. Uh, that's not to say that there's not a little bit of money somewhere behind them, but when we talk about the election, we're talking about this this Republican primary because there hasn't been a Democrat win a seat statewide as a Democrat in how long, Harry? 16 years? It's been a while. Yeah. Well, so this that's the, the election is going to be Tuesday, not in November. True. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Um everybody's kind of ducked this issue for now. But once this, I think it's a great idea. Moving on. Well, w- once this once this comes out, you're going to see there. You're going to see a fractionization inside the Republican Party like you haven't seen in a long time. Well, I don't know. I'm seeing some pretty hard fractionalization fracturing in it now, and uh, I'd really like to see what happens if indeed that ruling does come down as leaked later in June, because that's when it's the 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 ruling is going to come down in June. All right, and this is. This is all bad for college sports. I mean, we probably have, what, 450 people on scholarship at Alabama, whether they're women's tennis players, women's softball players, golfers, you know, baseball players, non-revenue sports that should, that have for years and years and years been able to create a better life for themselves because they've been able to get scholarships and participate in college athletics. That's what college athletics is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be something where people come and make money. And you make a decision about where you go to school based on how much money you're going to make. You should make a decision based on where you have the best chance to develop as a person, as a student, and as a player, which is what we've always tried to major in. And we're going to continue to do that. And hopefully there's enough people out there that will want to do it. But I know the consequence is going to be difficult for the people who are spending tons of money to get players. And you've read about them. You know who they are. I mean, we were second in recruiting last year. A&M was first. A&M bought every player on their team, made a deal for name, image, and likeness. All right, we didn't buy one player. All right, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. Roll Tide. We're supposed to say that every time Dick Saban speaks. First of all, I'll say it's a shame that we have to do this. It's really despicable. It's despicable that somebody can say things about somebody and an organ. More importantly, 17-year-old kids. You're taking shots at 17-year-old kids and their families. And they broke state laws. They're, they're, they're all money. We bought every player on this group. We never bought anybody. No rules were broken. Nothing was done wrong. It was all in the, and the way we do things, the ethics in which we do things. And these families, it's despicable that a reputable head coach could come out and say this when he doesn't get his way or things don't go his way. The narcissist in him doesn't allow those things to happen. And it's ridiculous But when, when he's not on top. And the parody in college football he's been talking about, go talk to coaches who coach for him. You'll find out all the parody. Go dig in Harry, wherever he's been. But, Harry, did you speak this up on purpose? you got to sit here and defend 17-year-old kids. And this sounds like Jimbo Fisher on like, Because we do man. things right. We're always going to do things right. But we're, not, we're always going to be here. We're doing this, a heck of a job. These you're doing, I swear this is wrong, regular man. speed, dude. No organization of recruiting you're doing him wrong, man. This sounds like he's got, he's got key bunk in the bathroom. Say these things to defend them. Come on now. Of this organization. I'm not fast-forwarding. 17-year-old kids. And their families. This is, how you, got, you got to stop it, Some dude. Some people think they're It's fucking ridiculous. Don't dig into how God did his, his deal. Let me tell you one goddamn thing. It's fucking respectful. A lot of things you don't want to know. Come on. We built him up to be the exhaust. I don't even person. like Jimbo Fisher. Go dig into his past. Dirty. Or anybody that's ever coached with him. Go dig into his past. You can find out anything you want to find out. What he does and how he does it. And it's despicable. It really is. And it's a shame we have to set up here. It's all a shame and so despicable. And it's personal to us? Yes, it is. What did I say about name, image, and likeness, Reigns? No, I really said it'd don't. be the death of college football. It's amazing that we're allowed to do those things. It's really despicable. And I, and I hate it for our players who are coming here who did things the right way, have done things the right way, and will continue to do things the right way. I apologize to you that people insult you publicly the way they're doing it. And our fans, I, I, I apologize to you guys for people saying those things about Texas A&M. I promise you this. There are no, there <laughs> are no God, there I'm are not nothing. doing this. It's the second time we've had to do this with grown men who don't get their way and want to pout throw so a fit. so wrong, man. And act up. Just go ask all the people who work for him. You know exactly what he's about. I always said this. My dad always told me this. When people show you who they are, God, believe them. You got to believe them, brother. Questions? 
Because he's moving, dude. Move. This is so fucked. You got to fix that in post or something. No. Oh, a couple things, Jimbo. This is real oh, time. Power. Have you had any? That is not, dude. He, Jimbo food oh, does not power. talk that way. He doesn't move that you fast. Just call? Not this is like 1.5 speed or something. And, uh, he shows you who he is. And then I just wanted to. He's the greatest ever, huh? And then I just wanted to. I think like, he's all keyed up. What's that for movie, dude? Quit saying that. No players in your. You're saying that no players in the state There's no, no re- laws of anything we ever promised, done anything that goes against the laws of the state of Texas, and it's insulting to say a 17 year old and his family broke laws. No. Down front, Brent. You know, y'all have both spoken so highly of each other in the past in terms of what y'all have done in your previous relationship. So, how disappointing was it to hear that from him, you know, in terms of, you know, a mentor type to you? It's as disappointing. Well. No, I wasn't. No, listen, you coach with people like Bobby Bowden and learn how to do things, you coach with other people and learn how not to do things. I, I say that uh, whenever you break from a dynasty and the dynasty kind of spits down at you, you better have some pretty good lungs to be able to spit back up. And, um, you know, if A&M did what they had to do and got the top recruiting class, they should beat Alabama this year. And if uh, Nick Saban hangs 60 points on him, we'll see how fast Jimbo talks after that. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting <clears throat> game this year, for sure. So the Ministry of Information oh, has, launched a web, has launched a great. website to, to combat the baby formula shortage. And did you see C-SPAN the other night? They appropriated $85 million. Yep, let me tell you something interesting I learned last week. Under the about, War Powers Act. Yeah. Well, that's it's, uh, the War Powers Production Act. War it's not Powers the War Production Powers Act. Act. There you go. Um, let me tell you, the, um, the woman who has been named to lead the Committee of Public Information is um, a woman named Nina Jankowicz. Yeah, we watched her limerick, her Mary Poppins show. Right. And uh, she's a bit much, um, but she's under Department of uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. And here's the thing. Jankowicz said that the and I hate to even ring this bell because I can't unring it and I'm going to hear about it for the rest of the weekend. But. Jankowicz was a proponent of the theory that the Hunter Biden laptop deal was a a contravention of the Trump campaign. And she also was a big believer in the Steele dossier. So here we've got someone who is going to be in charge of misinformation in the White House on Capitol Hill, who has been duped twice, duped twice. by the laptop's real and dossier was suspect at best. Right. Uh, well, the steel dossier is I, – I, I've always said this about the steel dossier. I feel about that like I feel about the report from the economic development director. You can say whatever you want. Right. You know, and whether or not people believe it has nothing to do with the fact that it's verifiable or not. You know, I have an enormous member. But nobody can verify that but my wife and a handful of other people. You know, so unfortunate. I can say it. The unfortunate few, but I can I can say it all I want, and if I say it the right way, people will believe it. So moving on to something of substance, there was an attorney general's questionnaire sent out. I haven't seen the one that Mr. Marshall filled out of you. No, or I that he did. And uh, of course, construction's underway up in Elmore County. Have you been by there? Well, you haven't been by there. Anyway, I have not. I, I went by. I don't. I don't think I have a picture in the in the slideshow, but um. Anyway, Jimmy Buffett wants to remind you to go get your voter registration and all that. So, uh, eighty three point one million infected in the U.S. with one million one thousand nine hundred and fifty two deaths. You know what today is? I had time to deal with these people and meet these people. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and had. Have- Free steak knives, million dead people. Oh, third prize you fired. He's not. He's not the only one that should get credit. Do you agree? And of course, remember 
the elder statesman that was going to save us from the coronavirus and put an end to it and everything, that really hadn't happened either. But there are the numbers official, um, and this is this is the website that we've been watching all along. They take the CDC information and crunch it. Don't just give you what they regurgitate. And Mr. Rip is not here this week, so we will take the liberty of uh, just in sending you over to his website, theripreport.com. And um, I thought I would talk a little bit about, since he's not here, the progress being made at the Fairhope uh, Go Mesa Master Plan. Uh, nothing's happening. About, I was going to say, didn't we talk about that last week and there's no new developments in that? Right. So uh, one more time, they, they Gabe wrote a pretty decent article this week about the three um, candidates that we were talking about earlier, Jonathan Armstrong, Steve Carey, and Matt McKenzie, who are vying for the Baldwin County Commission District 2 seat. Um, there was a, another good article in here by Gabe about House District 95, um, House District 94, 96, uh, Greg Albritton and his opponent in uh, State Senate District 22. So you should check that out. And then finally, <laughs> rounding it out, Gabe Times wrote every single article I I cited this week uh, the on the primary ballot includes eighty five million dollars for state park, uh, and that that's that uh, bond issue we were telling you about. And these are just some conceptual designs. I guess that'd be Wheeler State Park. Um, they'd be shown right there. I can't think of anywhere else with the rivers and a mountain. You got to tell me that looks like Lake of the Ozarks to me. I don't oh, know man. where that is. We got some beautiful state parks. You just wouldn't believe. Oh, it. I know it. I just don't know where that one is. So, uh, speaking of (laughs) beautiful things that uh, have an underbelly, so the city of Gulf Shores has issued a cease and desist to Baldwin County Sewer Service over an unpermitted sludge pond at its controversial Fort Morgan wastewater treatment plant. Separately, ADEM is hosting a public hearing on the plant's capacity, and that was yesterday. Um, I have, uh, so there's been a couple of reports on it, but I'm going to, I think that's what the RIP reports on this week, so I'm gonna let Mister RIP. Uh, hand yeah, it. that's uh, pretty much uh, everybody down here listening to Gulf Shores Radio. Come and find out what the actual capacity for shit is on the beach in beautiful Orange Beach in Gulf Shores, Alabama, the Redneck Riviera, and the least full of shit place you'll ever find. All right, <clears throat> I, I don't think that's true. Um, so charter boats get a 79 day snapper season and here's the big one may 27th is it appears harry and his nephew are going to go fire shotguns at some red snapper well i had to cover up that ad so i just legally speaking i don't see anything wrong with that (laughs) neither would any of these people so, upcoming elections, of course, primary is Tuesday, primary runoff June 21st, general election November 8th, and these are all of your local candidates, and a reminder of just exactly what kind of dirty tricks are being played in Montgomery right now between the Ethics Commission, my opponent, and uh, the powers that be. Um, you know, we, we can't see, we, we, we're, aware, we're aware Bill Canary spoke with former speaker Mike Hubbard from the uh, Lee County Jail, but we can't see what they talked about. Explain that one to me. So, Reigns, I've been to a bunch of planning commission meetings in my life, okay? I've been staff in, you know, probably for 10 or 12 years uh, writing recommendations. I have never in my life seen anything like this. Do you see the the rainbow of yeah. colors and it's a spectrum. Yeah, the spectrum. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. It's a bit tough to read. To well, be honest with you. Y- you know, it's it's kind of like what you said before about economic development. If you take yeah. it out of its context and you put it into a simplified way for people to understand how you're bending the rules to make sure everything gets approved. Well, then this is a real good example of how to do that. Yeah, it, it, it certainly seems that way. And every, I've been to a few meetings. Well, every one of these meetings where they're going to have controversy, they they make the county planner get up there in classroom. Right. And you see you see the classrooming that was going on the other night when I was there. I couldn't get a, a 
that's as good of a picture as I could get. So we actually um, had a, a pretty good. I, I found a very good format for that sort of thing. And I'm being serious. We had it last year with the Harris County flood district. Um, as most of the people that have ever paid attention to this podcast or me will know that I am an, I'm an extreme advocate for flood control uh, because my neighborhood is flooded, flooded catastrophically three times in six drowned months. Chickens. But Did it drown the chickens in the neighborhood? That's when it you drowned everything. A bad flood. And the, Harris County Flood District has been controversial on how they're handling the issue. But one of the things they, they did that I really that I really enjoyed was they held a meeting explaining what they were going to do. And then afterwards, listen to this. They had 30 employees, not clerks, but like engineers spread out around the room. And they said, these people are all going to be available to take questions from you. And they all know the same amount of knowledge and they're all working on this project. So if you have questions about it, go to one of them and ask them. So instead of having a line and a public comment section, they just divided, you know, there were 60, 70 people there. And every one of these engineers got like two or three people and they answered all their questions. And yeah. I thought that was fantastic. That's how it should be done. Yeah. The, put, that, out, put out advocates, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, that's if you want people to understand what's really going on. This is a way of well, explaining yeah. to them how you have no choice but to approve everything that comes before you. Yes, you're, you're absolutely correct about that. I just wanted to mention that I thought that was a fantastic concept for doing exactly what you said. If you want people to understand what's happening, that's a really good way to do it. I hate that Paul Ripp is not here for this. A proposed retail and residential development could be coming to the intersection of Highway 181 and County Road 48 and the Fairhope Planning Commit. If the Fairhope Planning Commission approves the project, the artist rendering shows what the project could look like if a if approved. You ought to see what my artist rendering was like before I was born. Doesn't match the end project at all. All right. So Reigns, do you know what's going on right now in Gulf Shores, Alabama? A hangout music festival. Correct. A Mundo proof that the mayor and city council care nothing for their citizens and only for the almighty dollar. What I like to call drug fest. And this shows all the places where the citizens can't travel because the parking lots have been closed so that they can people can park there and be ferried down to the main stage. Um, do you remember Clark County Sheriff Ray, Ray Norris. Norris? Yes, sir. So anyhow, apparently he borrowed some money that he was supposed to, you know, he, he, he gets paid $1.25 a day to feed, feed each prisoner. And he's running low on that money, so he went and took out a loan. And he was supposed to use the money for that. Instead, he played. He went and gambled it away. Yeah, so now he's indicted by the feds. I don't think we'll be seeing him anytime soon. So the Baldwin County Coroner requests additional investigators to keep up with the caseload. There were 479 dead people in 2019 and 663 by 2021. I would imagine that could be accounted for by his boss, the sheriff, telling everybody to bring the plague on down. To or for just a few years using ago. using rifles instead of tasers. I think it's fantastic that, that the uh, Mac Funeral Home is going to get five more employees under. Wait. Yeah, that's mean, right. Oh, they, the, he's the coroner, sorry, but he also office, works the as Mac the undertaker Funeral. for the sheriff. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. It's all made for love down here. Including, uh, so, you know, just in time for North Baldwin Utilities to make these bungalows available for the new industrial recruits, they're selling them. They've been declared surplus by the city council. They're on the market for 500 grand a piece. And, of I course, they were fantastic. purchased for Mayor what, Wills. What better way to liquidate liability than just outright sell it? Well, yeah, and then, boy, don't you wish, don't you know he wishes he could give all that scholarship money away today, be mm. done with it. But um, I, I do have some news. I have uh, a little bird told me that there would be a lawsuit filed sometime this coming week, and, of course, it, 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 it'll it be too late to help my campaign, but uh, it's sure going to be fun to watch the fireworks. Yes, truly. And here are some of my campaign promises and um, 
other sundry propaganda. So one thing I do want to do is I would like to get my dog mated. You'd like to get your dog what? You know, he I didn't I didn't fix him and I'd like to have some puppies one day. So if I can use my platform to find somebody that has a, a female border doodle, um, that would be worth all my time and effort <laughs> on the road running around the state. And of course, there's my cute little fiance, and uh, this is just kind of where I'm from, and and uh, so and my my old hunting camp and that kind of thing. And uh, so, did, did did you catch this article um, when we were talking about Baldwin County Sewer Service and 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 uh, feces in the water and all that? Uh, right. Our weekly bacteria test have kicked off, and I can tell you that it ain't real pretty. It's not a good time to swim in the Gulf of Mexico, he said every day for the last two years. Well, I don't disagree with you. So, anyway, if you're looking for me on on wait, not Wednesday's not a good a good example. But for Friday, when I get done whitewater rafting in West Virginia, I'm gonna have one of these. Oh, that's a uh. Woodford and sweet tea and why is the pineapple in there? It's an inside Aren't joke. Okay. <laughs> Paul's from Fairhope. He'll know. Oh, I get it. Believe All right. Me. So, uh, so what's on your plate for this weekend? I'm headed to North Alabama to a couple of, uh, meet and greets, press the flesh, do those last minute things that all candidates do. I am entertaining two of my Mississippi contingent uh, in the greater political tour of Houston on tomorrow night. And then I am in the car headed to Burns Lake All right. on Monday. And I'll see you then. All right. Well, um, like I said, I'm going to be on the road. So uh, if anybody sees the lights on in my house, it's not me. Call the cops. Not that they aren't watching anyway. So y'all need to have your kids, have your wife, and have your husband because they're raping everybody out here. Andrew, Andrew Warren, Warren Donald. Donald. Magna, Magna Cum Laude. Academic Medal Award. I love it that he didn't stick around to shake his hand. Thank you, Andrew. One thing we can be sure of.